This is Alex Bruel from PR Week. I am here with Carol Cohn from Edelman. Welcome, Carol. Thank you. And uh, you are known for sustainability, your work in citizenship, your work in CSR. Um, tell me a little bit about what's going on in that arena right now. What are the hottest trends? The current trends are that it's no longer about philanthropy. It's not about writing a check. It's about being more strategic. It's about integrating social issues into the business for both social and business benefit. And how do you do that and maintain your integrity as a business and, and communicate what you're doing without having it seem forced? That's a, that is a great question. It's a great question. Because with social media today and with such transparency and the ability with bloggers and tweeting for an instant when you misstep to be seen as inauthentic, I've always said, I have this little phrase, it's called earn the accolades. Companies need to act before they talk. And so if you're a company and you're saying, well, you know, I, I'm new to this space about social issues engagement, I would say, no, let's stop for a moment. You've probably done a lot already. It may not be under one umbrella. It may not be as kind of had many years ago, feeding children better. It may not be as PNC grow up rate. It may not have a name to it, but it, most companies today have been doing disparate things. So the first thing they need to do before they embark on a focus is to take an inventory. What have we done in the past? Where have we given money? What volunteerism have we done? What grants have we been made? What have we done in green? And just gather that as a baseline and then begin to put it into buckets. And that's how they can begin to have credibility. They can have it in their initial CR report, they can have it on their website, they can have it in speeches, they can share it with employees. So they probably start with at least some good works. Then they say, how do we take it up a notch? How are we more strategic? And they, the way you can talk about it is you bring in the third parties. Um, you communicate it by partnering with not-for-profits, with governmental groups, with experts. You find the white space. Where can you make an impact where you truly can measure it? And then you begin that the experts start talking on your behalf and the not-for-profits start talking about on your behalf. And then when you start getting the results in the market, then you can communicate that outward. Looking at what's going on with BP, this is a company that used to be tied to um, work Beyond control on the environmental right. front, um, doing a lot in the green space, um, and now they're in crisis. They're in uh, business and environmental crisis. What does this indicate for other companies, maybe in the energy industry or other industries, um, who also could have a similar crisis in years to come? Energy and extractive industries very, very difficult because, by their very nature, they are scarring the environment. So there is no, first of all, I'm not going to say that there's any easy answer to it. From Edelman's point of view, from my point of view before I came to Edelman, companies must engage in the world. They need to earn a license to operate. They need to build a goodwill bank. Um, any company, big or small, will have a crisis. And it's by engagement, by having people out there who will come and talk about to, and support you. When you misstep, there are things that you must do, no matter how radical, they can start small. And you, you, you get a victory, you get another victory. You go backwards, you can then go forward again. It's such an extraordinary area, but ultimately, go back to Michael Porter. Michael Porter says, if you find what's good for the business, what's the business in? What's the social need? For example, many, um, Jeff Immel from GE says, one of the most effective and powerful CSR initiatives, or they call it citizenship at GE, is when they build a plant in a developing country because they're creating jobs. You know, and so he said, that is citizenship. They do many other things, but that's citizenship for them. If they take their healthy imagination or their eco-imagination as a rallying cry, that's what's so exciting about GE, they're rallying cries from a CEO to the organization. We are going to change. We need to use our imagination 
in a sustainable, environment-friendly way. Take out the costs. Make things less carbon footprint. Make things lighter. Make more powerful jet engines. Make better locomotives, better desalinization, and then take it to healthy imagination to help, which is very yeah. exciting. Well, it's great to see you so passionate about these issues. Um, and talking a little bit about you, and right. so you recently left your own agency to right. start at Edelman. What is, what is it What's like that? not running your own agency? Do you miss it? Do you feel like you're, you miss this kind of, that kind of leadership? Or you know, tell me a little bit about your new position. It's a great question. I, initially, when we started, I was doing client work, and, and I said, hi, it's Carol Cohn from Edelman, and it, to me, oh, it's not Carol Cohn from Cohn. <laughs> so that caused me to pause, but um, it is very, I think it's exciting, there's so many exciting things, because one, I don't have to wake up in the morning and worry about where is the next piece of business coming. Um, there are, with over 3,000 colleagues around the world, with the 52 years of a reputation. The new business constantly, people want to know what is Edelman's point of view, and they're involved in so many RFPs. But what's also exciting, their current clients mm -hmm. are growing so much. Well, great. Thank you so much for being with us, Carol Cohen Edelman. Thank you very much for the opportunity.